Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Lucky Underdog Podcast, brought to you by Believe Network and whatever way you watch it in your podcast. And right now, my boy Devin's not in the building with us. He'll be with us shortly, so I'm not going to – I can't give the, the great intro that he gives, but I will tell you that the Lucky Underdog Podcast, we are always bringing out – we're always showing the underdogs, and we always going to highlight the guys who don't get the media coverage – and tonight, specifically, we're going to be highlighting those guys who might not be getting those high stars, maybe not the four-star, five-stars, maybe those lower three-stars, higher three-stars that we might be trying to point out tonight is who's going to be impacting the, the campus, be making a huge impact in campus coming up. So I got my guy Ryan, Ryan Roberts with us today to give us a little insight of you know, the new recruiting class we have. So we're excited to have him on. We've had him on before. He's always given us some great insight on what's going on in the locker room with the Irish and we're, we're glad to have him back. Yeah, man. Oh, CJ, I appreciate you having me back, man. It's been a uh, it's been a busy few weeks. I mean, Notre Dame, new OC, obviously, and getting ready for the bowl game and National Signing Day, and it's uh, it's rolling in Notre Dame land, man. I know you guys got a lot to talk about right now for oh, yeah. sure. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And let's. Uh, I mean, just like you said, uh, new OC, man. That it's a uh, Mike Denbrock. You know, that's a a big uh. A big steal for us, you know. We'll, we'll cover that a little bit more once Devin gets in, uh, you know, gets here for the show. But um, right now, you know, let's let's kind of talk about these signees. You know, these 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 guys, these guys that we'll be expecting on campus pretty soon. Um, yeah. You know, kind of who are the guys that we should be, you know, looking out for. Um, you know, you know, out of that, out of that group right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. I mean, first and foremost, I think it ended up being a really tremendous class for Marcus Freeman mm-hmm. and the staff because I, I think that they. They really, I really think that they hit the key areas with highly ranked players and guys that can kind of come in and contribute potentially early if they're needed. I mean, they got a high four-star caliber quarterback, bordering five-star caliber quarterback in CJ Carr, depending on who you ask. They brought in a big-time wide receiver in Cam Williams, who's in the state of Illinois, Glenbard South, which is you know just a, a suburb of Chicago, so right in their backyard type of thing. They got a big time offensive tackle, Gerby Lambert, up in the state of Massachusetts. So we're talking about quarterback, offensive tackle, wide receiver. They got a couple of really talented defensive ends like Bryce Young, who's Bryant Young's son, who was obviously a former Notre Dame great. So they got some high impact players, I think, in the most important positions that you look for from football perspective. But I think they really rounded out, CJ, with, and I know it's perfect for this show, but they found a lot of guys that they were kind of ahead of the curve on a little bit, you know, in, in the terms of they found some guys that were, you know, had the three-star moniker on them and and right. were lightly recruited to begin and kind of blew up a little bit later. I think Notre Dame in general, Marcus Freeman, obviously his coaching staff and Chad Bowden in the recruiting department, I think did a really good job of evaluating and finding some really good, you know, people would typically call them diamonds, but I just think mm-hmm. – they were a little bit of late risers in different situations. So, I mean, you got a kid in Bodie Cahoon who's down kind of in your neighborhood, I believe, you know, down there in the state of Virginia. He went to Patrick Henry in Roanoke, okay. Virginia. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that young man is listed as a three star, but he's six foot three, 220 pounds right around, clocked at a four five four electronic 40 yard dash this offseason. And in 11 games, he had 203 tackles. 27 tackles for loss and nine sacks as a senior. So you you can keep the three star all you want, man. Yeah. I don't care about it because yeah. that kid is talented and super well, productive. Man. So I think they did a great job with that. Yeah, I mean, and especially you know from a, I mean, just being a Virginia guy, you know, especially from a place like Roanoke, you're not gonna get much exposure. So you know, the, he probably is not not one of those guys at all the camps and stuff. So you know, he's he's yeah. definitely a Notre Dame guy who's gonna you know come on campus, make it make a huge impact, man. That's that's the that's funny. The Funny quick story about Bodie Cahoon, actually. He's one of the biggest risers in the 2024 class in general because he was actually committed to Ohio State as a lacrosse player originally. So wow. he's like one of the – he's like an All-American lacrosse player. Yeah, like he is bad. legitimately really good. He was there for like a year and a half, and then he decided, you know, I actually want, would rather play football. So he yeah. kind of opened his recruitment and teams like Miami and Tennessee and some big-time programs, all the Virginia schools, they came after him hard and – Ultimately, Notre Dame won out because he, he. I mean, he has family. He has roots of family in the state of Indiana in general. But then, obviously, he's a four point two GPA kid, kind of weighted type of player. So, fascinating backgrounds, man. But I, again, I think that really goes to Notre Dame, the staff, and the recruiting department. They really did their homework on some of these kids that, again, are a little bit of 
I guess outside the realm of like, you know, oh, high star, four star caliber player, high five star, like they got five star upside players in a lot of areas that just kind of come in different shapes and packages this year. Right. And, you know, I mean, a lot of, you know, for me, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a star guy myself. You know, I was, yes. I think I was a three star coming out of high school. Um, and, you know, I mean, as far as, you know, the stars, you know, I, I think I played with more five stars that didn't do well than I did, you know, that did well. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, those guys kind of peak early sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you kind of you don't like you don't like to see it, but it's like, you know, you, you, you like to see the guys who just get there and just can just develop and keep developing and get better and better as they keep going. And uh, so those I mean, and, and, you, know, you know, a lot of three stars, you know, happen like that. A lot of, you know, four stars as well. So, um, you know, I just for every guy that's coming on campus, man, I'm excited for him. Uh, you know, yep. it's a great experience. Um, I know how you know, I, I know how I felt coming from a small boarding school in Virginia, like going to going to Notre Dame, uh, it was a dream come true. So for all these guys to sign and, you know, you know make their way, getting in the start to get to campus, that's a real special thing. So however their, you know, however their journeys end up or whatever, man, I'm just, I'm excited for all of, it, all of them. Hopefully they, hopefully they won't, won't have too many people transfer out, you know, how, how that goes, but you know, yep. let's just, let's just hope for the best. Absolutely. And I, I think that that's my favorite part about Notre Dame though, because I know obviously you can attest to this, but, they recruit nationally at such a level where it's like, you know, they had players from Texas this cycle, Illinois, California. They're recruiting Hawaii in the 2025 yeah. class. They recruited Georgia this year, North Carolina. They got a couple of really good players on North Carolina this year. It's really cool just to kind of see how these classes mesh a little bit, you know, because they're kids from all different, you know, you know, just oh yeah, socioeconomic <laughs> backgrounds and yeah. and where they come from and family entities and you know some are from public schools some are from private schools and just a lot of different backgrounds which is really neat and i mean honestly like they also because recruiting is so hard and i agree with you like i'm not a stargazer i've never i push back against star ratings all the time because it's like we're talking about 17 18 year old kids where it's like some kids are early risers some kids are late risers like there's right. no developmental path that's kind of like mainstream right you know what i mean like they just kind of develop it all different ways but i really do think that's the cool part of notre dame is like you kids from everywhere man i mean yeah, really yeah. like i mean you're yourself from virginia but like some of our favorite players ever like man and yeah. and you know stefan to down in georgia and, and kids yeah. out in cali you know and then Alo alohi gilman becomes a stud at notre dame and he's like he's at navy his freshman year you know what i mean like that's the coolest part about notre dame in my opinion yeah no it's, it's actually really cool to even think about it now like you know, it's a lot of my best friends from, you know, from Notre Dame or from, you know, South Carolina, California, New Jersey, I mean, literally all Texas, all over the place, New York, like literally all over the country. So, you know, Notre Dame really does a great job recruiting nationally. And you really have yep. different, you really around different backgrounds, like a, a lot of different backgrounds and it's cool, you know, cool to, you know, cool to be around those type of guys and those different personalities, especially you, you know, Especially when you meet a Cali guy for the first time, like it's it's like a, it's a different experience, like because they're just so different from you. But uh, but yeah, man, we're definitely excited for those young guys coming on campus. Um, like like I said, man, it's 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 a dream come true for a lot of those guys. So go do your were, thing. Were you an early Were you an early enrollee back in the day? Just uh, out of no. curiosity. No, you I were, was. So I was. I uh, yeah, my, my high school. We had to graduate in the spring. You know, it wasn't. Yes, it wasn't that, that's uh, true. It yeah. wasn't none of that. Um, you can. You know, kids now. I, I got kids now to come to my gym, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, I graduated my sophomore year, basically. Like, they're they were done with school. Like, they just all they got to do is go to electives for the next couple of couple of years. So, it's a, it's, um, it's 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 a wild world, man. Because I mean, to your point, like Woodbury Forest, uh, Armel Mukum, who signed last year for to Notre Dame from Woodbury, he also wasn't able to graduate early. I could could have yeah. connected those dots there. There was actually a Notre Dame target that was a twenty twenty five corner, Kevin Humes. He's out of mm. St. Francis Academy in in, um, in like the Maryland, D.C. area. And so we're in December of his junior year, right? He just reclassified. So he's going to be – so he's ready to go to college now a year and a half in advance. I'm just like, how the heck do they make this stuff happen? You know what I mean? Mm. Like it's it's a wild world, man. But, yeah, it's I, – I ask that because this Notre Dame class in 2024, it's, it's the – most early enrollees that Notre Dame has ever had in a class. Wow. They have 15 early enrollees out of 23 commits in the class. <laughs> so like, like the whole 70% of the yeah. class is going to yeah. be here in January. You know what I mean? Which is wow. wild. That is really wild. And you know, another another thing, I, I don't know if you really 
have any insight on this, but like, how is like, how are they like the NIL value? Is it like based on like the recruit, like how they're ranked or like, is it just it, off their like position? Like kind of it, thing. It, it's, it's partly the, it's partly the ranking. I, I know like on three does like the NIL in evaluation type of stuff. Like it's mostly, and, and I think this is true in the, in the real world, right? Like your value comes from like what your audience is and what your market is. And so yeah. like they do their NIL evaluations based upon like what they're, you know, where they come from one, like the demographic, but then it's more about like your social media reach. How many followers do you have on X? How many followers do you have on Instagram? What do you have on TikTok? Like that's really yeah. where the value comes. And then obviously like, you know, big time quarterback that's going to Notre Dame, for instance, like right. their NIL value is going to be a little bit higher. So I think positionally that also plays into it, but it's really social media reach, man, early on in the process. And I, I, I think it's great you know, to a degree, I think there's some things that still need to be figured out, but ultimately I, but my favorite thing about the Sam Hartman era in Notre Dame for the year was I thought Sam was very up and down and it was, you know, just, you know, there was some really good. There was some not so great, but the best thing about Sam Hartman left this, this uh, program, in my opinion, is he showed that Notre Dame, that a guy can go to Notre Dame and make a lot of money because yeah. before it was a fact, like, Michael Mayer, Isaiah Foskey, they made a lot of money at Notre Dame. And they were actually one of two of the top 10 highest paid college football players their final year at Notre Dame. Nobody knows about that, though. But the great thing about Sam Hartman is we all know he made it right around $2 million this year, which is great for Notre Dame because that's one of the – like Alabama, Georgia, the, like they're going to poke holes and be like, oh, you can't – you're not going to make money like you're going to make down here up at Notre Dame. And it's not true. <laughs> it's it's just not a fact. You know what I mean? So I think that transparency of NIL at Notre Dame is like a big thing moving forward, honestly. Uh, you know, I didn't really think about that, but that's huge. I mean, to make I mean, two mil. I mean, if a, I mean, for the, a quarterback coming up. Like, yeah, wow. that's, that's, that's good money for them for young kids coming up. So, man, they definitely got to be looking like, oh, yeah, that's a, looking they chops. So, man, that's yeah. man, that's that's huge. So. Thank you for that. I didn't. I didn't. I just saw like I was see like the name and then like there you see their evaluation. Like how is it being evaluated? Is it like a number? Is it like a yep. set thing? Like if they the rank number fifty five in the nation. They they rank like this or NIL or something. I don't know. But I just had to ask and see if you knew what was up with all that. But um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh you know I think we can go ahead and move on to our new OC that we mm -hmm. stole from Coach Kelly. <laughs> you know, our, our our guy Mike Denbrock. Um, he, he was my receiver coach uh, for two years. Um, while I was in, while I was there, uh, helped me tremendously. Um, I, I gotta say, one of the best coaches I've had, had the privilege to play play for. Um, I think I said it the other week. I think I said last week. Uh, you know, I would run through a wall for him any day. And I'm I'm really yep. pleased that you know the guys at Notre Dame get the get to have him as a coach again because he really actually he really cares about the really cares about the players he's not he's not one of those guys who just says that he actually means it and um you know it really comes from a, a real place so um you know i just want to just you know make sure i put that sentiment out there because you know dem rock's always been my boy man i appreciate the, you know all, all the love he gave gave to our receiver room while we were there and the yeah. confidence he, he instilled in us it, it, I think it's going to be big time for the program. I mean, we could talk about the recruiting implications because it's going to be very attractive to a lot of like Notre Dame, you know, future receivers and running backs and quarterbacks that are going to want to play for Mike Denbrock, obviously. But I think just the, I mean, the, the, the dynamic of you got the, the top OC in the country in terms of his team just averaged over 46 points a game last year at LSU, right? Like that, just getting that dynamic of, Taking him from LSU, a big time SEC program, getting it back up to South Bend, and you mentioned it already, and I've heard nothing but rave reviews as far as I haven't heard a single person yet, even behind the scenes, mm -hmm. tell me anything negative about Mike Denbrock. It's like yeah. all praise, like great person, great coach, obviously, great individual, and he just builds those relationships. So I think that he's going to be big time for the Notre Dame program to be able to establish an offensive identity, get it back, and I mean he's done a at Notre Dame, at Cincinnati, at LSU. Like, he's had a lot of great offenses, obviously, over yeah. the last few years. So, I think he's going to do a tremendous job, man. And I'm super happy because it's also going to be a little bit of stability, you know? Like, he's not – like, Tommy was a young guy. Jared Parker was a young guy. They, they, there's a little bit of a stepping stone feel to, like, young guys having the OC job. Coach Denbrock's a little bit older at this point. Yeah. He's running around 60 years old. He might be kind of nearing the end of retirement somewhat soon. So, I mean right. – 
you could, in theory, this could be the final stop for Mike Denbrock, which if it is, that's a, it's a great final destination because he's oh, never yeah. spoken anything but high praise of Notre Dame, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, just, you know, coming with, you know, guy with like Denbrock, you know, coming in with all these new pieces to an offense. Uh, I think this is going to be a great, I think that was probably the perfect choice just for us because we have so many new pieces. I think a guy like Riley Leonard, he'll be able to come in and he'll mesh with it. He'll mesh great with a guy like coach Denbrock, who's not yep. going to be putting, you know, who's going to pressure him, but it's not going to, no, not going to try to, you know, kick him when he's down, but he's going to, you know, but also is he going to put that, he's, gonna, he's also going to put that, put, put that pressure on him that he needs to go out there and make plays, but he's also not going to make the offense as complicated where it's, you know, the guys aren't don't really know what's going on. Like he's going to make it very yep. simple. He's going to make let the guys go out there and play their best football. So um, that's what I'm, I'm that's what I'm most excited about because I know the guy, I know the receivers, the tight ends, the whole offense. I know they're going to get a chance to really put their their best foot forward, and that's all I can really ask for. Yeah, I mean, from a position position coach perspective, I mean, you mentioned obviously a wide receiver coach, but obviously you he would in theory take over the tight end coach role which that's mm-hmm. literally what he was just doing at LSU he was also coaching tight ends i just think it's a it's an easy transition man and i think that it matters that he's been here like he, he knows the yeah. day in and day out grind that the student athletes go through right like going to class and going to to morning practice and lift and all those types of things like that those dynamics i think are a big help to someone like coach Denbrock and being able to come in and like you said, I mean, he's going to be able to really energize, I think, a lot of people early on. And like the the Jane Daniels thing that he just did in LSU, I think the best thing that he did was he allowed Jane Daniels to be who he was, right? Like to, to have his dynamic ability. You can't just kind of pigeonhole dynamic dual threat quarterbacks and just make them pocket passers, right? Like he's going to allow a guy like Riley Leonard to be an athlete, to be able to move around, to be able to be himself. And my favorite thing for schematically is that I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, CJ, because obviously you played for him, but I wouldn't say from what I've watched of Mike Denbrock at Notre Dame, Cincinnati, at LSU the past few years, I wouldn't say he's like this most like exotic scheme guy of all time. I think that he has shown me that he knows who his playmakers are and he's going to do the best to get them the football in the primetime moments. Like I think about yourself. I mm-hmm. think about at Cincinnati when he had Jerome Ford, like he le- he leaned on Jerome Ford. He had Desmond Ritter last year, obviously with Jane Daniels and the wide receivers. I feel like he's just a very, who are my playmakers? And I'm going to make sure that they are the focal point of this offense. Yeah. And uh, I would like, even to the test of that, like he'll even like when you're in this, like when you're in that moment, like in the game and he's like, all right, you're, he feels that you're doing, you're, you're doing your thing. He's like, all right, I need to get you the ball more. Like he'll, he'll, he'll do that. And I, I mean, it was even a point. I think um, it was one year I, I, I think we're playing Purdue I had ran a dig route. I tripped, but I think a couple of plays before I had a big catch on a, a, a flag, a corner route, whatever. And he he calls me down after the after the after the drive. He's like, "What the, what the f are you doing?" Like, and he's like, "I'm trying to get you the ball. Like, you're doing your thing. I'm trying to get you the ball." And then like he he's that type of coach. Like, yeah, he like you you might mess up, but he's like, "Man, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you going. Like, I want yeah. I, like it's your, it's your time to shine. I'm gonna give you your shot. Like, if, if it's your it's your opportunity to shine, I'm gonna give you your shot." So, um. You know, that's a, that's the kind of coach you mean. That, that that's the kind of coach that you know is going to prog- progress guys. You know, especially them young guys who are coming in, uh, especially the young young receivers and new receivers that we have that not going to be used to them. Not going to be used to Riley Leonard his his the way he plays sometimes. And, you know, kind of the, the way yep. he might he might get out the pocket and run around like when we have to. He has to create. He's gonna have to create early on in the season. So he might just just having a, 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 a you know OC who's going to instill that instill that you know confidence like hey yo y'all y'all gonna make them plays he's your quarterback gonna try to make the plays, so y'all gotta make the plays for him so yep. he's that type of coach and that's the kind of co- kind of coach you need to progress the offense and he's got a long track record as a very good recruiter as well so yeah, yeah I, I just I, I think it's a can't miss hire man i really do like i mean they were talking about you know the the two big names that were on the board were obviously mike denbrock and kirby moore from missouri was the other guy that people were talking about a lot and honestly like I like a lot of what Kirby Moore did Missouri this year and what he's been doing over the last few years. I mean, he coached under Kalen DeBoer, who's obviously now at Washington. I I would have been totally okay with the the Kirby Moore hire, but it's it would still have been a little bit more risky, right? Like he's still a right. younger guy, still finding his way. I just like what's the downside to Mike Denbrock? You know what I mean? Like you just you know what you're gonna get. He's going to be right. very good in all capacities. And I just yeah, exactly. I just don't think there's much downside to that move. 
no, definitely, definitely a great move for Coach Freeman and 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 the whole and the whole whole group of everybody, a whole group of Irish there at the Goog. So man, we're happy for happy to have Denbrock back, man. It's a uh, it's a pleasure, man. We're really happy to see him see him walk back through them doors because um, I know a lot of guys in that locker room gonna have confidence in them too. So uh, Ryan, man, we really appreciate you. We appreciate the time that you you, you came on today. Um, give us a little bit, of, give us a little bit of insight about them them guys in the um in the new classes coming in. Uh, a lot of the in, early, early enrollees that you know I didn't know that we had fifteen of, which is amazing. Um, yeah, those guys can go ahead and get started, so they can do they can do spring ball and all that, which is great. I mean that's just getting those reps early on. Um, you know, kind of getting going through that that you know rookie, you know, kind of that freshman fifteen that you're gonna put on, you know, at, at all the freshmen. So just kind of getting that out the way early on and getting hitting that first winner. No name. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's, that's good. So you can kind of kind of get that out the way for the next time. So you they, know they even had uh, they even <laughs> had CJ Carr. At, he was literally he's literally practicing in the bowl prep with them as well. Obviously, he can't play in the game. I don't, I don't yeah. think they would want him to play anyway. But right. yeah, man, they're getting him in early and uh, should be a very interesting 2024 season. That's for sure. It definitely will be. It definitely will be some man. Appreciate you. Appreciate the time, uh, man. Yeah. You know, hopefully, you know, we can get you on again. Uh, you know, have uh, good luck. You know, I don't know what we got for this this bowl game. We'll see. It looks like it's gonna be like a competitive spring game almost. So uh, we'll see how the bowl game goes, man. But Ryan, we really appreciate you coming on the Lucky Underdog podcast once again, man. It's always a pleasure, man. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Thank you as always for having me. I really appreciate it. But it's crazy though, because I mean, he's definitely had a lot of success with the 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 caliber of dudes that he's coached at Notre Dame. I mean, when he was there in '02. He had offensive tackles and tight ends, Anthony Fasano. He had dudes, you know what I'm saying? Then mm-hmm. he came back again and had, like, Eifert in them. Then he had you and he had CJ and Fuller and all of y'all. So, like, you know, he, he does a good job with the talent that he's given. And he also is a good recruiter, I think, from what I remember. He was a good a, a good recruiter. So, I think it's definitely made Notre Dame a little more dangerous in that passing game, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, just speaking to, I think, the recruiting side of it, like, I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Like, he he real, like, he can really relate to the players. Like, I guess just because he's coached so many dudes, like, when you when you mm-hmm. really when you coach some dudes who, like, especially he been at Notre Dame, he, like, they, they going to, he going to know, he going to know the culture. He going to know what they talking about, like, and how to kind of get through their, on, you know, to, to, to the right way to get through the Notre Dame experience almost. So, like, yeah. Um, he just a, he's a great I think he's a great guy just for that locker room in general cuz uh man you know just you got a guy who's been there for over 20 years at this point like just about like he know that he knows South Bend like the back of his hand like you this know, saves so much know. development I'm probably, he probably got some real estate still he probably oh, got some sure. real estate I'm out sure. there South Bend for sure retired. he got some yeah, he knew what it was in 02. He probably was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this little spot down real quick. Yeah. Just, just I got get, a little spot on Eddie Street know? or something. <laughs> for sure, for sure, bro. I think another thing too with 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 him is he's definitely coming off of having a Heisman Trophy win and having just coached somebody that led the country in yards and touchdowns and was super dynamic. And I think you know, Riley Leonard is not as dynamic, but I think he's got some of that to him a little bit, you know what I mean? And I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I mean, even with dudes like C.J. Carr, who's definitely a, a, an a arm talent, you know. Absolutely. But I think it's definitely going to be uh, – I think it's definitely good good for the guys, man. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, like recruiting is definitely going to be easy for him. I mean, he's been there since – almost for like Rudy days, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's going back to 02. Them kids – some of them kids was born and the kids he recruited was – Probably wasn't even alive I back then. I wasn't even alive. Yeah, yeah like was, yeah, first time. So that's yeah, that's yeah, that's something of his own. I mean, you know, me and Ryan kind of were touching on it too. Like you know, at uh, what he did with Jaden Daniels this year, you really saw Jaden Daniels be himself. Like yeah. every game, it was like yo, you know, whatever they were they were losing, winning. Jaden Daniels was going to put on the doing show, his thing, doing his doing thing. thing. And I think that's the I think that's what. Denbrock does best like he's he's gonna instill that confidence and he's gonna put you out he's gonna put you in the best best position to do your thing like he's not gonna he's not gonna make it complicated he's not gonna have you reading this reading that he's gonna be like yo 
he ain't open or whatever, I don't, I'm not sure. His, I, don't, I don't know his strategy, or whatever. But like, if he ain't open this and that, just run, just go, 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 do yeah. your thing, and do your thing. Like I know the receiver. You know, we had guys like Corey Robinson, Will Fuller. Um, he, I mean, T.J. Jones. He coached T.J. Jones. I mean, Eifert. Um, all some those names, guys, bro. Them some good dudes. And like, locked all them boys up in practice. Uh, locked them all. Up. <laughs> Devaris Daniels. I can't forget my boy D. Oh, I Devaris definitely Daniels. locked Devaris up before. <laughs> definitely. I got footage of that too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hey, messy. I'm messy on this. I'm messy on this last episode before we hit 24. I'm getting messy. Yeah. Hey, yeah, D. D, man, he um all those guys, man, and even myself, man, he really like he really put a he really gave us that confidence. Like, man, y'all, yeah, like he, like he would he would he would talk shit to us. Like he kind of talked shit to, like, man, like what the fuck you doing? Like, but he would shit. tell you, like, he straight up, like, man, like, you gotta go make them plays. Like your quarterback is trying to make the plays, so you gotta you gotta make the plays for him. And like, gotta especially go. when we had, he was like, "Man, y'all got a nice quarterback. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta make the plays for him." Like, and we was like, "Shit, I guess so." Like, man, man we, nah, we, we was clicking people. that year. That was a, that was a good year, man. The first <laughs> half of that year, that hurt, the first half of twenty fourteen was epic, bro. Like, yeah, it was epic, bro. Yeah, that's <sighs> for sure. But yeah, man. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like I said, Ryan, man, we happy to have Coach D back, man. It's a uh, for sure. It's a, um for, for everybody in that locker room. I think they're gonna have a anybody who gets a chance to meet meet him, have a relationship with him. He's a great guy, um, easy to talk to, you know, real relatable and Definitely. stuff. So y'all gonna have a real, real fun time having him in that locker room. And I think the offense, offense, and him and Riley Leonard are kind of the, a great match just for uh especially for this for this year for kind of what we need. Um, you know, some kind of little stability from the you know the head you know mm -hmm. from the head offense you know the head of the offense and then. As as far as like what the quarterback position is gonna look like, you know, a guy like Riley Leonard and Angeli. However, if it plays out, you know, kind of getting a guy like Denbrock, he's gonna make the thing make it's it's kind of as simple for him and let them just go out there and play their best football. Definitely, and I think this is another great hire for for Coach Freeman for Marcus. You know, he mm -hmm. he's getting somebody that's a great offensive mind, and him being a very defensive minded head coach, it's always yeah. good when you see them getting a real stable – I mean, because, I mean, I feel like Coach Coach Denbrock definitely has had chances to go be the head man at plenty of places before, and he's had tons of responsibilities. So I think, yeah, this is definitely going to be great for Notre Dame. And I think we're going to get uh, – it's going to be some good some good showings next year. You know, I ain't going to speak too soon and say, you know, what's yeah. going to happen. But I think we're definitely just going to have some good showings. I think it's going to be a lot of dudes whose confidence is going to get boosted. And yeah. uh yeah, it's gonna be a lot of dudes who get to get let off that leash a little bit, you know, they get to let it rip. Man. Yeah. Like you said, yeah, man, no. I think Coach D is definitely good for Notre Dame. I think I mean you hit the nail around the head, the confidence boost. I mean, we as far that's the that's the one thing you got kinda you, you really saw lacking this year was the confidence and then you know, the mm -hmm. guys have confidence in each other. Um and that's and that's and that's that's where it starts at. Everybody gotta believe in each other that they're gonna and then the quarterback got to believe the O line gonna block, and then when he throw the ball, they got to believe that they gonna catch. the ball gonna be there, and, he, and the, the receiver's gonna catch it. So you know, everybody got to be doing their job. And I think um, Coach D, Coach Jim Rock will definitely bring that accountability that we were mm -hmm. kind of missing here. So yeah, man. Let me Great ask you your opinion on this. Let me ask you your opinion on something mm -hmm. to kind of backtrack a little bit. It was something that I kind of was that I observed from Sam this year. Like once things started to kind of go a little bit bad, there was a lot of times when he would be on the sideline sitting by himself. Yeah. Do you think that's what a quarter – is that what you want out of your quarterback, or do you want your quarterback to be not, not you know, super rah-rah and, hey, let's go, I got him, I'm going to make it up. But what what do you think is the right response? Like, how do you – because to me, that looked real standoffish, and it didn't seem like he had the rapport with his teammates that we thought he did. That's that's you know. that's what it's like to me too. You know, like right. when as far as like if if you had that relationship with your boys and like things aren't going well, you you gonna you gonna go over to him and be like, yo, come on, somebody man. tapping him on the shoulder or something. It was like he yeah. was just a lonely like, man over there a little bit. You no, know, even like you know we had like you know a guy like Malik. You know, I know he's a kind of the extreme example because he was so he was kind of our boy. But like mm -hmm. if we had a couple of drives where it was like yo things weren't going well. Malik is gonna be like, yo, 
let's go. Like, let's pick it up. Like, we going we gonna score this next drive. You know, yeah. anytime you go sit down, I mean, I obviously, I mean, you, like, you know, and, and obviously the camera's always gonna, you know, zoom in right on you and stuff. For but sure. like, uh, then they might not always show like the the points when you go yeah, over there and talk yeah. to them. But um, at the same time, like you know, it's never a good look when you just go over and sit by yourself and you just kind of like put your head down. You know, it's like mm-hmm. whenever you like shit, you you fuck up, like go go say what's up to your teammates and just go look at the game. Like yeah, that's it. Like yeah. just keep it moving. Um, go to the next, you know, n- next play. Uh, but it did look it did look kind of you know that definitely looked like that at times. Like he just didn't have that relationship with the guys, where it's like he can go over there and just say. Say like, yo, I I need y'all right now. I need y'all to you know do this yeah. for me. I need y'all to do that for me. He didn't. You, you can you can just tell he didn't have that. He didn't have that relationship with the receivers. The O line he had a little bit relate, better relationship. As you you could see that like you could definitely see they were a lot better friends. Like after the after the practice, you could tell he would go over. To, he he going over to the O line house like right. he ain't chilling with the the young the young boy receivers. Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> you nah. And yeah. I mean. He's, he came in for one year, so like, yeah. is that even his responsibility to be trying to connect with the young dudes and trying to lead them the right way? Like, I mean, it kind of is, but like, it depends on what you're really there for. Like, right? It's like you know, it's it's hard to. I mean, and, and for him, it's like, it's hard to ask him to be the the head, the quarterback, making yeah. you know, me and Ryan was talking about. He made two mil this year, so he 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 in commercials, he doing media, he doing interviews all the time, <laughs> yeah. like. So half the time he probably not even you know when he after he yeah, done all that stuff he like I'm just trying to go chill. So that mm-hmm. to, to even to his point he like man you know he probably was so busy this whole year like he, yeah. I, I, he probably, probably had zero. barely any time to enjoy yeah, what little time. there is to enjoy in South Bend. <laughs> but I, 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 I can almost guarantee he probably even he ain't even been to uh what's the little place on uh, on campus. Um, the little breakfast place I used to go to, Grace Hall. Is it Grace Hall? Oh man, Grace! Yeah, like, I, hey yo, I the little you, chicken wrap. You get the chicken wrap down in the. Ooh, bro, I'm telling you, I bet you he ain't even been to Grace because he just he's so be probably so busy, like he ain't got time. Man, if Grace is still even, if it's even still, if they still even doing know. the thing over yeah. there, I don't even know. You know they, they, they you know it. Zom. You know Zom's not even a dorm anymore, bro. Yeah, I know. I heard they Zom closed down a while ago. <laughs> they shut it down. Hurt my heart, bro. Hurt my he heart, man. He said, y'all, y'all, y'all looking like y'all partying like a real college. We can't have that. You feel me? <laughs> like we that's where if you wanted to get a real college experience, you pulled up to a Zom dorm party like your freshman year. You had to. You had to. Yeah, that right was, that was yeah. yeah, you like it. That's, Zom really getting after it. Like, I ain't got mm-hmm. Appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. Appreciate y'all for tuning in all season long. It's been a pleasure and an honor. It's your boy DB. It's your boy CJ. We out here.